Okay, we have a kind of an unusual integral. We've got the integral from zero to infinity of the Lambert W function over x times square root of x dx. Okay, I know I did an integral before where we just integrated the Lambert W function alone, but here we've got the Lambert W function and x squared root of x. This here could also be written, we could also write this as x to the 3 halves, just combining those. Now for the Lambert W function, we have this formula over here to the right. I'm not going to get too into the Lambert W function as I've went over a lot of the details of that in other videos. So I'll provide a link in the description to the playlist and the introduction video on Lambert W. But for this one, we really just need this one formula here. For this, we know that if we've got something in this form, Lambert W, X, E to the X, we just get back the input, this X. And this doesn't just have to be a single variable. This could be some kind of expression or some more complicated thing, but we just get back the X. So in doing this, the real problem is how do we deal with Lambert W inside of an integral? Well, the way I want to do it is with the, just a U substitution. If I set U equal to Lambert W of X, and then from here, we could just differentiate and get our DU value. I did the derivative of Lambert W in a previous video. I don't remember exactly how that went, but what I want to do instead is if we solve for x, then this is actually going to be easier to differentiate, I think. So solving for x on this, we have x equal to u e to the u. Now the reason this works, if you kind of think about it going back the other way, if I were to take the Lambert W on both sides of this, we'd get Lambert W of x on the left side. If I take Lambert W here on the right side, well now we have something in this form here. So this thing here, is just u, but this right here is just the substitution we made flipped around. So that's kind of one way to look at it. Another way to think about this is when we make a substitution u equal to ln x, when you solve for x on that, you get x e to the u. Well, the same thing we have ln x as the inverse function of this, Lambert w function is the inverse function of this thing. But anyway, now that we've solved for our x, we can just go ahead and take a derivative. So doing that, we get dx, this is gonna be product rule, so derivative u is just one, e to the u plus, keep this, derivative e to the u is e to the u, du, but then let's just factor out the e to the u, and we get e to the u, u plus one, du, and that's gonna be our dx. So now we'll come over here and we'll just go ahead and substitute. First, plugging in infinity into the Lambert W function. Well, you may not be too familiar with it, but just a very rough graph of the Lambert function. It's something like this. So as the x value, as this is going to infinity, this is very slowly also going to infinity. So our upper bound's going to infinity. You plug a zero in here, Lambert W at zero. That's this point here, that's also gonna be a zero. Now we substituted u for Lambert W, so this is gonna become u here. Our x value is this. Let's use this interpretation, x to the 3 halves. So we have u, e to the u, all to the 3 halves. I'm not sure I really want it that way, but let's just leave it for the moment. And then so for dx, we're going to have e to the u, u plus 1, du. But then here we can just do a bunch of algebra. We've got the same base here, here, and here. And we also have the same base with an e here. So let me, maybe let's just deal with these separately. So in the numerator, just worrying about the u stuff with this u plus 1, we have u times u plus 1. Distributing in the 3 halves, this is going to be u to the 3 halves. Then if I divide this u to the 3 halves in here, we have u to the minus 1 half, just with exponent properties. But then I can distribute this in here, and we end up with u 1 half plus u minus 1 half. So this is going to be all of our stuff with the base of u. So we'll have this e to the u in the numerator, and then this distributing in the 3 halves, this is going to be e 3 halves u. Divide this into this, exponent properties again, this is going to be e minus one half u. So what's going to happen is this whole integral is going to simplify to just this and this piece here. So let's take this and put it back in the integral. And then here, let's just take this and distribute it inside the parentheses. And then I can split this up into two separate integrals. And then at this point, both these integrals are looking really close to something we can use the gamma function on. But the only thing is for the gamma function, this exponent should just be minus u. Same thing with this one here. So what I'll do is I'm going to do one substitution for both these integrals just to clean up that piece. So what we'll do is I'll set t equal to 1 half u or u over 2. Then, of course, solving for u, u is going to be 2t. Take a derivative, then du is going to be 2dt.
And as you can see, I forgot my bounds here. This is still zero to infinity. So let's go ahead and substitute. We'll do it all kind of together on both these. So for the first one, now first on both these, the bounds, they're not gonna change. You have infinity to the half, that's still infinity, zero, that's still gonna be zero. So the bounds will be the same. I need to plug two T into this. So we'll write it two T one half. This here is gonna clean up to E minus T and DU is gonna be two DT. For the two, let's bring it out front. And for this other one, same kind of thing. Again, we're gonna have a two come out front. So let's just write that two, zero to infinity. We need to plug two T in here. So this is gonna be two T minus one half. Now, again, this one's gonna be E minus T. And then we already have the two out front. So this DU just becomes DT. And then one last thing, I don't really want this two here. Now over here in this one, two to the one half, that's gonna be square root of two. So out front, I can write this as two square root of two and just get rid of this right here. Same kind of thing on this one, but it's a minus one half. So that's one over square root of two. So we can write this as two square root of two and get rid of this. One last thing to set this up for the gamma function. For one half, I can rewrite that as three halves minus one. Same kind of thing over here, minus a half. I can rewrite that as one half minus one. And so now what we have here, this is perfectly set up for the gamma function. This is gonna be our input right here in blue. So this one, this whole integral is just gonna be the same thing as gamma of three halves, just using the formula. And this one over here, the input is gonna be right here. So this integral is gonna be gamma of one half. So let's just multiply it out to see what we have. We're gonna have this two square root of two in front times gamma of three halves plus two square root of two times gamma of one half. Now for gamma of one half, there's a well-known value for this. This is gonna be just square root of pi. So we'll just plug that in. But the last thing we need to deal with is gamma of three halves. So for gamma of three halves, you might just memorize that value as well, but we do have a formula. What I like to do for this is if we have gamma of n plus one, we can reduce it because it's got the same property as the factorial. So I can write gamma of n plus one as n gamma of n. So for gamma of three halves, I can write it as one half gamma of one half. But we just said gamma of one half is square root of pi. We have this value for gamma of three halves of just square root of pi over two. So we'll just plug this in over here. And now let's see if we can put it together. But first, here the twos are gonna cancel. So this first piece is gonna be square root of two times square root of pi. I'll write this as square root of two pi. On this part, let's kind of rationalize it multiplying by one. I just, do it over, I just did it over there because I don't have space. But here, square root of two times square root of two is two. So this is gonna cancel out with this. And so this is also gonna be square root of two times square root of pi, or square root of two pi but we just have two copies of this thing. So for my final solution, we just get two square root two pi and that's it. Okay, so there you go, pretty interesting. It turns out you can insert the Lambert W function into the integral in some cases and it might work out. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching, have a good day.